So, we had a lovely conversation with three people from Lizard Nixon. And uh, one person who's a drummer from Yumi Yokai, who is the only person that's from Calgary, the rest are from Red Deer. And we're about to talk about all ages shows. And uh, this is the interview, third interview that I've done so far. And I have no idea how I'm doing this all. That's happening to us. Hi everybody, you probably don't see me on camera right now, <laughs> or you may see me on camera right now, maybe I'll do this afterwards. You'll see me on camera right now, except my mouth isn't moving. <laughs> so we are interviewing the show that we're having this Friday. And it is a great all-ages show, and I'm really excited about it because I finally get to see what the 16-year-olds are doing. <laughs> I just don't know what they're doing anymore. But anyways, we've got three bands. We've got Umi Yokai, Lizard Nixon. Oh, we got four bands. Deadly Skulls, Toxic Femininity. Yes. I think Toxic Femininity is the... They're the young band, so so there's the high school band, which I'm really excited about. We got the Umi Yokai, which is three of you. One? I am so bad at this. <laughs> okay, Umi Yokai, which is one of them. Lizard Nixon, which is three of you. There we go. And they're going to be playing Cafe Clutch for the first time. So everybody, let me see this camera. Give them a warm welcome. Clap, 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 clap. I'll edit that in later. <laughs> okay, my first question is, I believe I've talked to Ian about this. Ian is, let me point. I gotta make sure I'm pointing. This person right here. This person right here is Ian. Um, I want to know when you first threw your first punk show. My first, threw my first punk show. Yeah. Oh, man. That was probably a house show that we threw in about 2008. Uh, I was playing in a band called Knuckles Up with our guitar player, uh, Kyle, at the time. And me and a couple of the guys from Knuckles Up were living in a house. It was just an old punk house, and we got evicted. And so what you do in a punk house when you get an eviction notice is you throw a house destruction party. Uh, so we played in the basement with, uh, with conniving cadavers and an old trad skin band called NFG, and we brought out a bunch of rattle cans and sledgehammers and went ate shit on the basement. It was pretty great. <laughs> yeah. You. This is Krista, by the way. Krista's right here. Right here. Um, did you throw any house parties before? Or, no, not house parties, but any shows, like punk shows in the beginning? or? Um, not really. This is actually my first band, and I'm 30-something. Don't worry about that part. Um, I was always kind of one of those people who was at the punk shows and destroying all the shit in people's houses, but I never actually put them on myself uh, until way later. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I still I want to get into this because I want to know what shows were like when you first started and what they're like now, in your opinion. And I'm talking to Ian, camera. <laughs> Is the best one to answer that. Stever? Oh, yes. Let's know. Let me know actually your first show. My first show? Yeah. Oh, 
first show, like talk show or whatever show? Ooh, my first show would have been probably with Rowdy Roger and the motherfuckers back when Rowdy Roger was still with the motherfuckers. Ooh, sunny side probably. <laughs> I was young, too young to remember, too stoned to remember. Uh, gee. Ooh, I want to say 99, 2000 maybe was the first time I went down. Great scene, lots of kids, lots of mohawks, lots of color, lots of shit that you don't see the kids walking around with anymore, so I'm pretty excited <laughs> to see what's, uh, what's going to happen with the all-ages kids here on Friday. Yeah. See if uh, they still got the studs out and whatnot. Let's find out how many kids we got hanging out in the back alley of the venue. <laughs> it's always, uh, you know, a good sign of uh, how the scene's doing, so. Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, Big question, because um, we talked about this before. We were talking about Straight Edge. This is like before when we started talking, like last week or whatever. We talked about the Straight Edge thing and how the scene was like before and what you've noticed now. I really want people to know what like the all ages or punk scene was, or just the punk scene in general, not just all ages, just like punk scene in general. What, like, has it changed or? Big time. I mean, I've been going to shows since, yeah, probably about the same time as Steve in the late 90s, early 2000s, and uh, I grew up in Northern California, so it was a pretty big scene there, uh, going to shows in Oakland and San Francisco all the time, and uh, it was super divided. It was, uh, everybody kind of did their own thing, and nobody, nobody went to any other shows, so you would go to a show, and it would be three or four or five bands uh, that were all basically the same exact band. I mean, you'd go to an 80s hardcore show, and it was just all 80s hardcore. All the bands were going to sound the same. If there was a straight-edge hardcore show, post-hardcore, whatever, going on down the street, chances are there was going to be a parking lot fight at some point because the scenes didn't get along, and it's just so completely different now where there's a lot of cross-pollination. Um, you know, hardcore bands like us are playing with post-hardcore bands like Umi Yokai all the time, and it's awesome. It's so much better to go to a show and get some variety and see different styles and see what the different uh, artists are coming up with in their, you know, within their own genres. And the scene just isn't isn't anywhere near as violent it was as what it used to be. And I think that's a really good positive thing that we're kind of creating safe spaces like that now. Uh, where people can still come and get rowdy and have a good time, but uh, you're not worried about, you know, getting your ass kicked by getting jumped by five or six people, right? It's it's way better now, in my opinion. What are you doing? Yeah. Do you have anything to say that's so awesome? I'm still pretty new to the scene, so I've just experienced, like, the mix of different genres. Like, I've played with death metal bands, and I've played with, like, old-school punk bands, and uh, pop punk bands, which was, it's just a cool experience. You get to meet a new crowd each time. You get to meet, you know, who's coming to the shows and, and the bands themselves, which is a cool experience too. And you get to talk to them and see what they are like and their experiences and grow in that aspect as well. Nice. I mean, hanging out at the Calgary All Ages scene when I was young in the All Ages scene was a single venue for the entire city. Everybody hang, would hang out at the uh, Calgary Multicultural Center on a Friday, Saturday. If you were in a band, whether you were some crappy high school rock and roll band or you know a punk band doing good, Knucklehead and everybody else would play there. Everybody always played the same thing. That was kind of always the sweet thing about Calgary. There was one scene. Didn't matter what you were into, what you liked. That was your only choice was to go hang out at the multi if you wanted to be part of the scene. And I mean, yeah, obviously lots lots of fights and, and drunk rowdiness happening, but uh, pretty cool that everybody was all in the same spot in this city, yeah. So my experience would probably be a lot different than all of them because I actually grew up in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. So even smaller, than anything that I think Ian or Steber have ever dealt with. And there were three different venue spaces that were all ages. There was the basement, which was pretty much all punk. There was Lay Relay, same thing. And then there was uh, Walkers, which was an industrial, like, techno, like, 
crazy goth scene area that was literally the door next to the basement. So you would have all of these punks with like giant fucking mohawks and then all these goth kids that were like standing really close to each other, but just staring each other down. Nothing ever fucking happened because it's fucking Saskatchewan. Like everybody's way too drunk and way too stoned to fucking get anything done. Um, But it was, it was pretty interesting to see like, how there was just like this parting of the seas in between the two venues and just like there was at least six feet apart kind of thing the whole time but I don't know the scene there was definitely a lot different than here you knew everybody at the shows uh it and it didn't really matter what was going on like sometimes it would be metal sometimes it would be punk and it was still always the same fucking people right and then you know you get to be about 16 17 and that's when you find out who the bouncers are at every venue that isn't all ages and you start getting in there. (laughs) Yeah. So that's my answer. I just, I want to get this out before I forget. Actually, no, I want to say a story first because one of my friends, he does like footwork and he did, (laughs) sorry, he did a show in a Regina place called Rock Bottom. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It just like, I don't know, that name is amazing for a freaking place called Rock Bottom. <laughs> yeah, the other, bar, the other bar in Regina. Oh, there goes the camera. <laughs> Hello, 321. You back? Okay, we back. What were we talking about? Uh, the Rock Bottom. Okay. I mean, it probably doesn't matter. The other bar that everybody goes to in Regina is called Gaslight. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Rock bottom and Gaslight. And like 80% of people are like, fuck Regina, Saskatoon's bitter. Edmonton, Calgary. I was about to say that. But honestly, they don't even care. Like, like, realistically, like, we watch Edmonton jerseys walk and we're just like, oh. So? I think, honestly, don't. Like, there are people who care about hockey, and I'm not going to say that it's horrible, but I, don't, I just. Genuinely, think the general public is like, it's just hockey. Yeah. <laughs> like, we don't really care that much, but that's just what I think. But I really want to get to this question because I just remember being in my high school years, but all I just shows was like blowing up, and that was like the whole hardcore scene yeah. that was like, it was like a revival. It was like around 2004. He yeah. So, so what's the question? What do we want to do? I mean, it was like I said, it was it was always the same kids. There was like probably like fifty to hundred of us rotating, and that was that was the scene. You know, other you know bands, friends would come out and everything else, but it was always always just the same people at the same freaking venue doing the same crap. It was it was just just a place we could go get drunk on a Friday. Um, when we weren't allowed into the bars yet. Um, the, once, once everything moved, they tore down. I mean, every venue we ever had, they tore down. Um, eventually, after we'd throw you know, a year or two, three years worth of shows there, they'd run in and shut down the venues. Um, and then everything moved over to Carpenters. And I'd kind of stepped away at that point. I never got big into the hardcore scene. Um, and I was old enough to go to the bars by the time that came around. So I kind of skipped out on a lot of that. Um, and yeah, it was really just, just the punk scene when I was... You know, young, around 2003, 2004 is when I stopped hanging out at all ages, so. Like that age, I was like listening to like Monine. <laughs> and then Alexis on Fire. And I know like Alexis on Fire is like more of like the, they got more national traction than most hardcore bands, but 
that's like that was like what I was listening to, and then I was just like, I also got a Billy Talent CD. I'm so happy, yeah! Like that was like me and like. That's what I listened we, we, to too. <laughs> yeah. I also was in that fucking. Yeah. Game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm not alone. I feel good because <laughs> I know like I've talked to a lot of post hardcore. And they're like it's not post hardcore, and I'm like. Sorry, I just, that's what I listened to. That's all I had access to as a kid. And all my friends told me about the local bands. So I knew, like, we, I don't know if you remember this band, Pants Situation. <laughs> this was, like, a weird local band that, like, my, one of my best friends was just, like, obsessed with. And I was like, why? <laughs> <laughs> No offense, no offense if you are watching. I feel bad, but um, also, no offense, or not no offense, but like, all ages, just as a disclaimer, all ages is all ages, and uh, we aren't encouraging anyone to drink. That is just what happened during that time. Please do not, like, think that, like, that's what you're supposed to do, because it's not. We got like the straight. <laughs> yeah, we we got we got the like. There's a whole straight edge scene for punk that's been around for a very long time. Don't forget about that. It's not about that. It's about the shows. So just please, just remember that. I just had to. I had to put that out there. I mean, they they can be the poster child for what happens if you drink when you're young. Ooh. We lost all of our venues. Because we were that rowdy. Yes. So we are not trying to do that. <laughs> we are not trying to do any of that. We are not encouraging anyone to drink. We're just explaining you the story and what happened back then. Okay? That is a disclaimer. Okay. Cool. Now the next question is, is... I mean, if you want to answer that question, the question she said was, how shit-faced have you been? I mean, let me ask actually this. How shit-faced have you been playing a punk show? Uh, for me, not very. Because, you know, we started this band during COVID. So we didn't really get to play that many shows. And like I said, I'm very new to this so I, I don't really have as many years on these two fuckers um, so yeah I mean I was I think the drunkest I've been playing a show was actually the first time that we played with Umi Yokai and I was so nervous because I thought they were so cool and I was like ah shit I'm just like this drunk old lady who's like you guys are really good hey like yeah so that's yep that was it yeah, yeah. So he just said he likes us. So <laughs> nailed it. Man, I mean, worst worst I ever had. I used I used to drum for another band, kind of a thrash thrash punk band before these guys, and we uh, we throw an annual May the Fourth party, and we did uh, did Verns. Um, if anybody's been down there, you know a, a lovely gentleman by the name of Clint who runs the bar there. Um, really, really loves his uh, his bottle of Jagermeister there. And uh, I, I, no, yeah, he's he's everybody's dad. He's uh, he's load bearing in the scene here in Calgary. He definitely holds uh, holds every musician up. Um, but him and I sat down because I'd kind of organized everything, brought the brands down, and he didn't have to do anything that day. He was pretty happy to have me around. So him and I probably drank a two six Jagermeister between us before I hit the stage that day. And I was wearing full stormtrooper costume, helmet, and everything. Uh, and anybody who's ever you know worn a stormtrooper helmet knows you can't see shit. Um, and then you get super drunk and you also can't see shit. And then your job is to literally see things and hit them with a set of sticks. Um, so that went pretty off the rails. Really, really fun show, but definitely the most wasted ever got. Barely stayed on the drum stool that day. Uh, but a great time was had by all. Uh, we don't drink in Umiyokai at shows very often because um, we used to go hard when we started learning our, uh, our instruments early. And we just kind of got out of the drinking Fast. I used to drink Everclear though, so it's not a, it's not a, not a good fucking time. Tolerance was too high to get drunk anymore. Yeah, and then 
you just you just die a little on the inside each time and you kind of just move on from drinking after that <laughs> yeah um actually we were just talking about this show on the way here when i was in knuckles up uh and this band too like i never really drink uh before i play i just i can't and um we got we hired this new uh, manager, and she got us on at the old Cowboys uh, in this battle of the bands, and we were like a hardcore punk band, so it didn't fit at all. And then we had two singers at the time, and one of our singers was too uh, too sick, and by too sick I mean too hungover to play. So we decided to play without him, and it was rough. We were having a rough go. I got loaded before the show. We were playing like shit. I fell off the stage. Um, and yeah, my coworker that came to see us didn't even vote for us for uh, Battle of the Bands. So yeah, real, real shot in the knackers on that one. <laughs> well, that sucks. <laughs> I'm sorry. Are we making drinking at shows not sound fun? It's the most fun we I don't know. I do it to cope. If I'm like, just like, I can't deal with the situation, I'm just gonna do it. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. I'm not encouraging anyone to do this. <laughs> I just, it's not like, just, look. I'm not joking you, sober options are awesome and you just need to be around good people. And if you're not around good people, that's probably why you're not having a good time. Just being honest. Steal your parents' money and go get therapy is what Krista suggests. <laughs> I said everybody on the scene when I was a kid was just terrible people, and that's why we all drank, just to cope with being around each other. Everybody's really good now. I think it's just a lot, like, I feel like it's just a lot less smaller because I feel like, I don't, I don't know, I think the radio is dumb. No, I think the radio is dumb. And I think it only plays what they think everybody listens to, but it's like more of a conditioning thing. As in like, they're making you listen to this music even though there's music outside of it. And they did this weird thing where they were like, anyone who listens to anything local is hipster. I'm like, well, no, but okay, that's what you think. <laughs> um, I do want to talk about your band. Lizard Nixon, let's talk about it. Or, actually, I want to talk about Umiokai first. Because I want to know more about you. I want to know more about you. I just want to know, what, what's your band like? Tell us everything. I'm sorry that like you're the only member here, but I want to know. It sounded a lot like Abba. Oh. Yeah, we take a lot of inspiration from Queen, and um, I already drew a blank. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, lots of hollow notes. Yep. Uh, <laughs> ska, lots of ska, lots of. <laughs> Um, no, we we kind of just take from whatever bands we're listening to and try and use that inspiration to make that kind of sound for different songs. So it's kind of hard to pull what kind of music we actually play in a sense. Like the next, uh, reco uh, we're recording an EP right now. We just finished drums and then we have strings and vocals still on the way to record. But uh the guy recording it said we sounded more like a metalcore band this time around. And then we played the new stuff, and he's like, now you guys don't sound like a metalcore band anymore, so I have no idea what the hell to call you guys. But um, I guess live, we're high energy, very high energy. The guys like to throw down for every band and then throw down even harder on stage and try and injure ourselves as best we can, I guess. <laughs> How did you meet? Oh, I met Lance through a girlfriend at the time. Uh, his girlfriend at the time was best friends with my girlfriend, and they wanted to reconnect because they hadn't talked since, like, high school. So the first time I met Lance, we actually didn't talk. 
he uh I, they were outside talking going out for a smoke or whatever and i was just inside on my phone and he came in and laid down like a bunch of homework he had for university so we i just was like all right cool this dude's got homework i'll just leave him alone and that's how we became really good friends. She's, <laughs> we'd speak a word to each other, and then she's like, hey, is it cool to come over? I was like, yeah, he seems like a cool guy. Like, <laughs> and then they kind of set us up. I, had, I borrowed a buddy's guitar, and then I had my drum kits in the back. So we just kind of started fucking around. I guess you answered it. I was going to be like, what kind of thing? What happened? And you said, we just fucked around. So that's like the perfect answer for that. Is it okay? Can I grab another round from the table? Okay. Sure. Oh, do you want... Can we... Hey, Jess. Can we do a pint? And then we can just pour it? Yeah, a pitcher. That's what I mean. Yeah. Like a pint. Just, just a pint to share with the whole crowd. <laughs> okay. Huh? Yeah, yeah. No, tell me everything. Tell me how you met your band. What? And you described your sound already, which is really great. Um, also, tell me where we can find you afterwards. But let let me know how you met Jeff. So Lance is our guitar player and backing vocalist. Jesse is his brother, the bass player, and we basically f forced him to play drums. So <laughs> we're like, he's like, hey, come over, meet this guy. He's really cool. So he, they came over to my place, and he didn't like. He already brought his bass over, so he handed Jesse the bass. He's like, all right, man, you're playing bass. Good luck. <laughs> he's like, dude, I don't know how to play bass. He's like, you played piano, so we'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> what I've heard but you know I uh, <laughs> and then um, Franz actually came in like a couple years after so it was me Jesse and Lance in like my basement and my garage torturing my parents and my sisters for like two years and my neighbors uh, we went from like hard rock to like a little punk to like hardcore punk and then Franz joined, and when he started screaming, we're like, all right, we got to go hardcore, because just, just his scream and, like, Knocked Loose was coming out at the time. So it was like, this would be perfect, and then we could build from there. Yeah. I want to know how you would describe their sound. How I would describe Umi's sound? Yeah. That's a good question. I, th I feel like Umi Yokai is doing all of the... Cheers. All of... Yeah, okay, cheers first. <laughs> Give me a second to think here. Good. I would describe you guys as all of my favorite parts of the early 2000s to late 2000s, like the, throughout the 2000s, the, the post-hardcore scene that was happening there. Like, you guys uh, don't have a ton of the really, really long, slow, melodic breakdowns. It's like just constant energy. And I love that. Like, I love the speed, I love the energy, and I love that uh, when you guys are up there, it doesn't, it doesn't fucking matter how many people are at the show. You guys are just giving it for each other because you fucking love it, and that makes everybody else fucking love it. I want to hear from everybody. I want to hear from everybody. Sorry. I, I mean, mine is, is probably a little less philosophical, but uh, definitely like fast and high energy. And uh, my philosophy of music is if you can play the same thing as the last guy just as good but faster, then you're better than him. Um, and they seem to do a pretty good job keeping the pace up, so... Yeah, and by, I mean, if that's the rule, then they're way better than us. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. There's there's definitely some of that, like, that that old school shit that I, I really enjoyed that was kind of like, a lot of my friends weren't into it kind of thing because they were like, oh, it's crust punk or nothing, blah, blah, blah. and I'm like, okay, well, fuck you. Um, yeah, they're, they're nice... <laughs> They're nice, clean boys. It's just not their thing. It's fine. Um, no, they just... I, 
I think it's kind of all across the board, just their fucking energy. You know, like they get up there and they just rule whatever space they're in and they just fucking love it. And I think that's the most important part that I always take away from their shows. Yeah. Honesty is okay, and you don't need to make it sound flashy. I'm just saying, it's like I get tired when people are like, oh, they're so nice, and um, they're like the greatest band in the world, and like, I love them. And you're like, just just be like, oh my God, this is the time I had. I'd like to thank God, my mom and dad. <laughs> We did it. But in the end, uh, we came up. Yeah, right? they always do the came up together. Every sports interview, watch them in a row. It'll be the same thing. It'll yeah. <laughs> we came up. We had a good time. It's all that matters. Yeah. Everything's good. Everything's great. Yeah. Someone needed some more defense, but that's okay. We'll get them next time. We'll get them next time. crowd is losers, so we're probably the winners. <laughs> Everyone in the crowd is probably loser. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Let's describe Lizard. First of all, who, like, how did this band all come together? I know you two, you two live together. I know that. Ian and Krista live together. But how did... Oh my god, you live there too! Well, maybe that's how you guys came together. No, I'm just joking. Alright, no, but I actually tell the story. I'm going to start with Ian. Uh, okay, so we were working... Uh, yeah, Krista, Steve, and I were working on a project before we were looking to get a, a metal project going that was unicorn-themed. And the idea was basically going to be an excuse to throw glitter at metalheads. And, and then COVID hit, and the drummer that we were playing with, because Steve was going to play a guitar in that, uh, the drummer was one of, the, one of those people that got crazy paranoid about COVID, which is, you know, fine, like, uh, be safe about it, whatever. But we were bored, and we wanted to keep jamming. And it was pretty recently after I had played a reunion show uh, when Steve and I's buddy died, uh, Joel, who uh, was in Knuckles Up, and he was also in a band called West Hooligan Brigade. And when he died, we did a wake. And those two bands got together, and we played six Knuckles Up songs, six Hooligan Brigade songs, and then a couple of cover songs of Joel's favorite songs. And it had been years since I'd played a punk show. And it was like, God damn, that was a lot of fucking fun. And like, I just want to start, like, I, I didn't think my interest was still in punk. But then playing that show just kind of reminded me how fucking fun it was to be in a punk band. And it was like, you guys want to fucking get a, a punk project going on the side of this unicorn project? And they were in on that. Steve liked the idea of moving to drums. And that just gained so much traction so much faster than the metal stuff that we were trying to work on. Because... Uh, yeah, it was just way less intricate and just play fast, have fun. And uh, yeah, so that came together in about June 2020-ish, somewhere in there. And uh, it started jamming and we played our first show the next year in August. And I think our first show ever was uh, with Umi Yokai. Yeah, you guys it. And uh, we play, this will be what, our maybe our fifth show together or something like that? Yeah, yeah we can't get away. Three to five. Yeah. We can't get away from you guys. It's it's awesome because every time I hit these guys up to play a show, the answer is always yes. So it's like, do I want to play again with Umi? Like, fuck yeah, I want to play again with Umi. Like, they always say yes. I just want to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's awesome. I'm just really happy that, like, just finding this kind of crew that, like, just kind of, like, like, you guys don't have, like, a name or anything, and I'm really happy about that. Like, usually it's like, we are the Bell crew, and we started out 20 years ago. We know more about promoting than you do. And you're just like, I'm just trying to figure this out. <laughs> but I just really want to, I appreciate that. But I do want to know, 
your perspective of how it all started. I don't. I mean, I've been I've been playing in a lot of kind of local bands that have gone nowhere in this city for a long time. Spent a bunch of time on guitar and drums and stuff. So uh, these guys kind of approached me. They were looking for you know one of the one of the best drummers in the city to join their project, and unfortunately they weren't available. And I was, so I decided to come down and uh, and rock some tunes with them. And it's been you know not a ton of regrets um, since then. So you know all, all in all, not not too bad of a choice on my part, I think. And uh, def definitely a good call on uh, the rest of the band bringing me in, I think. Yeah, I mean, he got a place to live out of it. It's great. Win-win. <laughs> um, so Ian and I have actually known each other for about nine years now. Um, he drunkenly demanded a cigarette from me, and uh, I couldn't get rid of him after that. Uh, so... Ever, pretty much ever since we, we've known each other, we've tried to get something started. We've had like 5,000 different names for things. I was on guitar for a while because I was like, I could totally play guitar. I cannot play guitar. Um, and then like I just kind of ran away for a bit. And then, yeah, in May of 2019, 2020, uh, he started bothering me again for playing in bands with him and uh, I said yes and started doing the the unicorn themed band and that was pretty wicked and actually going somewhere and then he asked me to start doing this punk thing and I was super down and it was super fun and our guitarist who's not here because he is there for only the amount of time that he has to be uh, he I I just had met him and like we hit it off really well uh and these guys have just been really amazing for like boosting my confidence because i fucking hate being in front of crowds and it's really good to have people behind me that actually give a shit about me yeah that is so wholesome <laughs> so wholesome <laughs> sorry i um i want to ask what everyone like how would everyone describe the sound of the band i just want like everyone's description of it because it's obviously it's never like the same one i hope it's not the same one if it is i'm gonna be pissed off because i feel like you just like rehearsed it before and it will automatically <laughs> tell you what uh, what genre you're playing in it's, it's pretty bad shazam Shazam! No. <laughs> That's so funny. I would actually like that app. I know it's annoying, but I would only because certain people harass me about what genres there is, and I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, describe the sound. Your band. Everything is always post-hardcore, post-punk, whatever. I don't want to do that. I, just, I think we're pre-lizardcore. Uh, it's coming. It's going to be fucking huge, and we're getting it going. Uh, yeah, so I'd say, yeah, we're pre-lizardcore for sure. I like to consider us a crossover thrash band because people don't really know what that is. Um, so, yeah, works for me. <laughs> I'm not even going to try and explain it because I don't fucking know. I'm also really bad with the whole like post-hardcore blah, 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 blah. I don't give a fuck. We sound like us. If you want to listen to us, listen to us kind of thing. Uh, if you don't like us after the first song, the second song is completely different. So don't fucking worry about it kind of thing. Um, you'll like us. You will. I like that. You will like them. <laughs> you will. You will like them all. <laughs> um, I want to know if there was any inspiration all three of you have drawn from the sound of your band. I don't know if that's a thing. Or a band that would be similar to the sound of your band, if that can even happen. So our band is so all over the place, and one of the ways that I really like to write music is like I'll take kind of a, a structure, or a theory, or a style, or something that I really like out of another band, and then like just completely take that that theory that he's using or she's using, and 
change it and make it my own. So I've you I've taken inspiration from for some of our songs from like there's uh, inspiration from a brief song in one of them, uh, and then there's the the latest song we're working on uh, takes inspiration from an O Hiroshima song. So I mean that's spanning all the way from like you know one of my favorite '77 pop uh, like almost pop punk type of bands to like this really like almost prog rock post metal shoegaze kind of band. So. It really is just all over the place, and uh, I like taking influence from anything, anything and everything that I'm listening to, and whatever sounds cool. I mean, yeah, I drum, so I don't really write much per se, but the boys will kind of put it all together, and then I'll sit down at the drum kit and make them play it significantly faster than they wrote it so that I don't get bored. Who are your favorite drummers, if that's a thing? Specifically, and I can't, I can't even remember the dude's name right now, but he's, he's a local cat, and he's been playing in blues bands in the city for a while, and most, most people would fall asleep watching this guy drum, but the amount of emotion that this dude could play, like bring out of a drum kit was just absolutely insane. I mean, there's, there's a ton of deadly drummers out there that I really enjoy, but... As far as just like a guy to sit down and watch like an instrument make like a motion and make like a crowd move around. I wish I could remember the old dude's name. He used to play drums for the Smoke and Aces Blues Band. And I can't remember his name now, but yeah. It's some guy. I'm just so <laughs> No, that's awesome. No, that's awesome. You just got it from a local person. That's really an amazing thing. You just experienced that live like I always used to just play drums kind of one speed one pace everything got hit the same whack 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 watching this guy you know play lightly across the kit play hard across the kit like really bring out the emotion of what a song was trying to do it just really inspired me to learn how to use my kit as much as possible I used to play a massive like 10 piece drum kit and now I've skimmed down to like a four piece kit with nothing on it and I can make more sound out of that thing than I ever could with a big kit. Just having, having watched him play and kind of gain some inspiration from what he did. I need to ask you that question later, but I want to know what your influence was from this band or like just like how you play, just the influence. And I'm going to also ask the question I'm probably going to ask Ian later, which is, what just influenced you to play your instrument in general? So, um, yeah, influences, that's a really good question. I don't, I don't really feel like I have any like specific um, influences when it comes to my vocals because they're like fucking everywhere. Um, and that is my only instrument because these don't fucking do anything. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, I guess, uh, when it comes to, to vocalists kind of in, in these genres, like, I really like shit like Leftover Crack, um, I've been listening to a shit ton of Days and Days when it comes to, like, actually writing the lyrics and stuff like that, um, and that would kind of be where I would land shit, I, I would probably give it over to somebody else as to what I sound like because I, I have no fucking clue. Um, yeah, and I don't remember the second question. I'm sorry. Okay, well, there you go. Boom, motherfucker. Thank you. Bye. Yes, you, for your band instruments so I just want to know what made you want to play that specific instrument and why so I mean I've always wanted to play bass and I just kind of love that low end but I also really love a lot of crunch and uh, yeah I just being a teenager I was super into all that new metal at the time that all of us were even if you're saying you weren't you're fucking lying you're listening to Corn and Lip Biscuit just like we were and uh, there was just so much low end and slap and high treble bass. It was, it was kind of the first 
type of music I was listening to at the time where like you could really pick the bass out of the crowd like it was really jumping through the mix and I just wanted to do that like I wanted to have that like uh, scooped mids high treble crunchy tone that like jumps out of the mix and is totally distinguishable from the bass and guitar and you know later on in my in my musical taste as I'm delving more into post metal and shoegaze and black gaze uh, I, I like taking any excuse I can to add, you know, a bunch of wash that in, in reverb or tremolo or, uh, you know, uh, throw in a bunch of crazy, uh, crazy different effects that, that make it sound interesting. I have to ask Umi Yokai, the only member. What got you into what you were playing? Like, what got you into just playing in general? Because I guess, like, I honestly think that's the question I was trying to ask is, like, why did you play your instrument? But what got you into that? Uh, I've always kind of liked drums. I had, like, some friends out of town that were, like, family friends, and they always had a drum kit, and I could always play it because, like, we could never really, like, afford it. And, like, with the neighbors around, it wouldn't have really worked with my family and, like, where we were at. So I couldn't really get one until, like, later in life. Uh, but I loved, like, just watching, like, I was always mesmerized by watching the drumsticks move. Like, they always looked so fast, and just watching, like, how little their hand moved while they did it, it just mesmerized the hell out of me. So I always thought it was so cool. And then I s ended up, my friend showed me one drummer from Japan that was just crazy high energy, and it got me so into, like, just that sort of drumming where you just like you're everywhere and you're slamming everything and you're up and you're down and you're moving like almost kind of moving around it was just was so cool to watch that it got me into it and then my parents made the mistake of saying if I could buy my own drum kit I, I could play it I got set it up and play and there's nothing they could do about it so <laughs> when I was when I was because they bought me like an electric drum kit from Costco so that's what I was kind of starting at like 17 and then 18, when I was working construction, I went and bought one <laughs> from at a, I don't know if they're still around, but if they are, shout out to a Beat It off of like 17th Ave. That, that's where I got my first drum kit. Oh, that's too bad. That's too bad. That guy was really awesome. He was, he was super supportive and like just really great. But he got me my first drum kit for a great price. And then I remember I was just, my best friend helped me move to the car, take it out of the car, then he had to go somewhere. But I set it up myself, and my parents came home, and they were just like, oh, you bought one. I was like, yep. And they're like, all right, I guess we walked into that and walked upstairs, and they accepted it. And then I met Lance, and we worked on it from there. So epic. <laughs> I was listening. I just I wanted to make sure I got everything I wanted to get out of everybody. But... Um, uh, so just in general, do you guys have any upcoming releases to promote? Uh, any of you? Uh, Umioka is recording right now. We just finished drums, and then we've got to do bass and guitar and vocals again. Plus, we're going to have hopefully a few features. Sorry. No, it's Sorry. all good. It's that answer sounds fashion. cuckoo. <laughs> 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 but, um, what was it? Uh, <laughs> that's, that's actually pretty, that's more cool, though. I think that's cool. Uh, what was, what was the quite? Oh, um, we hopefully will be in the summer, maybe early fall, but it'll be a little EP with our buddies from Pride Lines that we're doing a split with, and it's going to be really heavy and fun, so... Uh, and then for us, um, we're working on, we've got our demo out, it's on Bandcamp, you can check it out. Um, and we're just kind of working on writing our last couple songs so that we have enough material for uh, full length. And the plan is to get into the studio, hopefully late May, early June. Uh, so I'd be watching in the fall for, for an LP. Uh, uh, we pretty much just finished one more new song. I've got another one in my back pocket, and I know Kyle uh, has another kind of slower, heavy jam that we're going to work on, and then I think once those two are done, uh, that'll pretty much be it, and it'll be into the studio. Oi, oi. Um, one more. 
We gotta hype up the other bands that are playing. We got to. Yes, we do. I, I want to do that, but I want to know what you guys think of these bands while I have you here. So with Toxic Femininity, I mean, unfortunately, I haven't listened to either Deadly Skulls or Toxic Femininity yet. I'm really sorry, guys. Uh, it's been a busy fucking week. Um, but I'm just really, really psyched to see Toxic Femme because they're up and coming, because they're a group of girls, because they've got, you know, so much enthusiasm, it sounds like, to just get out there and do their thing. And, you know, as somebody who would have loved to have seen a lot of all girl bands and get that vibe and get that like energy off of somebody else. I definitely am really psyched to see them and to see what they can, you know, do. That's it. Yeah. I'm not even going to lie. And no, don't make this into anything. Like, it's just when you're like, I'm going to say this because I have to. It's when you're like a 14 year old or a 16 year old at that time, there's really nothing to see. I, I just need to know what they're going to do, and I'm really excited about it, and I think it was Ian, you're, you're the one who suggested it, right, Ian? Yeah. Okay, so Ian will probably know more about toxic femininity than most people here, um, but how did you find them? And I want to know. Uh, yeah, so this band, Lizard Nixon, has kind of got me back into promoting shows again, so I'm getting my uh, promo company going, it's called the Lizard Administration. And uh, so when uh, our mutual friend Liam approached me to put this show on here, uh, naturally, honestly, the first the first people I reached out to was Umi Yokai, and they said yes, as they always do, which was fucking awesome, and we're pumped on that. Uh, but then I started hitting up a few of our other friends' bands, and everybody was busy, uh, and I've been down that road before where I, I'm texting everyone I know, and I'm getting like 10 and 15 people telling me no, and I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to put up a post on uh, one of the Alberta punk groups. And so I did, and then Rick from the Deadly Skulls reached out to me and sent me some of their shit, and I listened to it, and it was fucking awesome. And it's kind of like that, uh, I want to say like 80s style, like kind of circle jerks, adolescence, like that kind of punk rock, and I really dig that. I mean, uh, you know, we all did. Uh, we all still do. And uh, he told me that his daughter was playing in a band too, and they'd probably also love to jump on, and she's in Toxic Femininity. And so the two bands are, I was like, yeah, like, I mean, you know, this all ages space, uh, th that's what this is for. <laughs> yeah. It's like the, this all ages space, that's what this is for. We want these, these young kids to have a place to play. So I was like, yeah, we really want them. And if you guys uh, can play too, that'd be awesome. And they all confirmed the same day. And yeah, I checked out Toxic Femininity. Um, I don't think they have a lot recorded, but uh, check them out on their Instagram for sure, because they've got uh, they've got live recorded stuff from their base, their jam space. Um, of them doing some uh, some cover songs, and they've got a couple uh, of videos of them playing live too. And I think the one that jumped out at me was they did a kitty cover. And then they actually got a like from the Kitty's official Insta, and I was told that Kitty reached out to them and said it was fucking awesome and gave them a bunch of encouragement. And I think that's pretty dope. Like, uh, the fact that these girls are all 16, 17 years old uh, and already putting music together and playing together, I mean, that's younger than I was when I first started playing music. So uh, having an opportunity to, to, as a promoter, put them on a bill and hopefully do it again, but also as a band member to, to get to share a stage with them, uh, both those bands, is, is pretty exciting. I'm really pumped on it. All right, I think, fuck, it's an hour already, shit. Um, I'm going to end that because I have to edit this. <laughs> oh, yeah, no biggie. I think we got this. We, we could do podcast version and we can do normal version what it is like people love podcasts let's get real
Yeah. Let's be real, okay? We'll have. I I can't do the muffled part though. Like the muffled part was the part where the mic was just like. <laughs> and you were and talking. You know what? About like, like, <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't do that part. But thank you. Um, their show is Friday at Cafe Clutch. They're an all ages show. April 29th. Toxic femininity. We gotta get this right. Toxic femininity. Deadly skulls. Lizard Nixon. Umi Yokai. Thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate this way too much. Like really. Yes. I'm. I'm trying to get this place the way it should be treated, especially. Cause just like a, there's a community, there's the art, there's a pantry that's broken because some homeless person just attacked it. There's coffee that actually tastes amazing. And there's just great people, like the queer library right there. So I just really want to make this place really good. And I really want to make it like what we had, which was all ages. Um, I just wish Tubby Dog didn't end, actually. I'm not even gonna lie, I do, I, I wish. Maybe, oh, well, yeah, we could be the new Tubby Dog. A hot tay. A log tay. <laughs> But well, thank you, thank you everybody. I really do appreciate this. I'm, I'm glad you guys actually spent, I know like a lot of people, last promoter, like I just tried to message them and they were just kind of like, no, that's too soon. So I'm really happy that you guys were just like, we're, we're just gonna do it. So thank you so much. <laughs> All right, and we are logging out. Oh wait, hold on, where's the ad? Can you, poster. This is the show. This is the show. This one right here. Do you see that? Look at that bear. Doesn't that look like an umi yokai bear? All right. Thank you. Have a good night.